Hi there. My name is Andy Nichol, and I'm the course tutor for the advanced course of Perfectly Spoken. That's level C1, um, which, if you're more familiar with IELTS, corresponds to uh, level 7 to 8 on the IELTS scale. So if you've done our level test and C1 is your score, this is the course that you should follow. Obviously, as an advanced learner of English, you've been studying English for uh, quite some time. You've acquired quite a rich and varied vocabulary. Um, you're able to speak quite fluently on a number of topics. And indeed, you are familiar with quite a, an array of sophisticated structures in English. So the idea is to build upon this. And we're going to look at uh, the course overview, um, which is essentially based around two pillars, which are grammar and vocabulary. Um, in this overview, you can see uh, the lessons by week. There are two lessons each week, and one will be on grammar and the other on vocabulary. Lesson one is on discourse markers. Um, the idea of the grammar uh, classes is really to fun focus on functionality and discourse markers, for example, are fantastically useful words and expressions that we use in a whole number of day-to-day um, uh, -day activities such as writing uh, an essay if you're a student at university, a report at work, um, preparing a presentation, and giving a presentation, sorry, and also, very importantly, we'll be looking at register. This is something which is very important for advanced students, understanding in which context we can use different language. Is it uh, formal, is it informal, and so on. In terms of vocabulary, um, there's two things to say about that. One, one is it's kind of thematic. It's on themes which, for example, advanced learners might encounter in the advanced exam, but on areas and things that we talk about on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're also looking at the vocabulary in terms of chunks of language, not just individual words, but idiomatic expressions, collocations, how words combine together. For example, we can say a strong coffee and not a heavy coffee. So in this case, lesson two is on the vocabulary of money, something we all talk about and worry about every day. And we'll be looking at idioms about money, financial terms, and so on. Lesson three is again on discourse markers. This is more kind of signposting language, expressions to indicate what you're going to say next, particularly useful in giving presentations. Lesson four is on expressions with get. Get is a fantastically versatile verb. It's used to make all sorts of phrasal verbs and indeed other expressions such as to get married or get engaged or get into trouble and so on. Lesson five is a review. Every fifth lesson is a review of the preceding four lessons. So this is reviewing discourse markers, money and get, basically to consolidate uh, what you have learned. Lesson six is on adding emphasis. Uh, uh, we may want to draw attention to a particular piece of information or highlight it. And we can do this by fronting, putting it right at the start of the sentence to give it emphasis. We can use auxiliary verbs and other uh, ways to add emphasis. Then we'll look at the vocabulary of sport. Again, a very common topic for everyday discussion, but also um, something which fears, appears time and again in official exams, such as IELTS and Cambridge Advanced. In Unit 8, again, we come back to add an emphasis. Every grammar topic is uh, based around two lessons, the two lessons based around it. And in this case, we'll be looking at expressions such as what, uh, what the world needs now is love, for example, a famous song. It emphasizes it. Um, and then the vocabulary of abstract nouns, we'll be looking at... Um, which are all uncountable nouns. We'll be looking at the suffixes we use to make it, such as ness, to make happiness, and so on, freedom, dom, and so on. In lesson 10, we will have a review of 
these uh, preceding lessons, adding emphasis, sport and abstract nouns. So moving on to the second half of the first term, there are 20 lessons in total. We can see here that we are looking at the grammar of speculation and deduction in Unit 1. Often we um, don't know something for sure, but we can guess the answer based on the evidence we have. So, for example, at a trivial level, someone knocks at the door and you say, oh, that must be my mum. She's just been to the shops. Or if it's impossible, that can't be my mum. She's on holiday at the moment. In Unit and sorry, lesson 12, we look at expressions with time. Again, a very important uh, thematic area. There are lots of fixed phrases to do with time, uh, race against time, uh, time is money, and all these sorts of things. Um, lesson 13 is, again, speculation and dis deduction this time, uh, adverbs and adjectives, things like bound to. He's bound to pass his exams. He uh, has been studying all month. And then again, in lesson 14, we've got another topical area, the arts. What is art? It's very controversial. People uh, think that may think that contemporary art isn't really art. Installations aren't art. And we look at the vocabulary of installations, sculptures, still life, and so on. Lesson 15, again, is a review of speculation and deduction, time and the arts. Lesson 16, we look at um, hypothetical meaning. It's curious that in English, for example, we use past tenses to talk about the present and future. So wish plus the past is to talk about the present. I wish I had uh, more money or I wish I was uh, or were taller. Yeah. Um, so where is a past form of the verb, had is a past form of the verb. Uh, if only as well, which is used to say something more emphatically, if only I had gone to the party and so on. Then we look at in lesson 17 at the vocabulary of dependent prepositions. This is something that even very advanced learners have lots of difficulties with. Um, because of, there are literally not rules about this, but we, there are patterns that we can see. And we'll be looking at different parts of speech, verbs, nouns, and adjectives. Um, things like to rely on or depend on and so on. Then we'll be looking at wish plus would, uh, which is to criticise someone's behaviour. I wish my partner wouldn't leave their dirty clothes lying around or whatever. Okay. Uh, in lesson 19, we look at the confusing words. Some words, even English speakers uh, sometimes get confused. One such as effect and affect, one effect being the noun, uh, sorry, the verb and the affect being the noun, especially meaning um, done specifically, this chair was specially made for me, or especially, which is means particularly, and so on. And then finally, we will have the, re the re fourth review uh, in lesson 20, looking again at hypothetical meaning, depending prepositions and confusing words. So I hope that you do um, tune into the lessons in this course. Make sure that you register to get the timetable and um, I'm sure you'll learn a lot uh, if you do. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.